Hello, good afternoon, namaskar. Welcome to NCRT's live interaction. This is Simran Singh. You all are watching us through PME Vidya channel number 10 or you can watch this particular session on NCRT official that is our YouTube channel. Now as it's our live interaction, if you have any questions, any queries, any feedback for us, then do write in the comment box of NCRT official in this particular session when you'll be watching it on NCRT official. Apart from that, we also have our contact number for all of you on the screen. So you can call us at 8800440559. Besides, as you are watching this session of PME with their channel number 10, it is for class 10. So our mail ID is dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in. You can write to us at this mail ID also. So today's session is for class 10th and the subject remains science and the topic that we'll be discussing is carbon and its compounds. Now it is part 6 means it is a continuation of the 5 sessions that have been conducted. If you haven't watched those sessions on carbon and its compounds then you don't have to worry because all our sessions are already available on NCRT official go and watch our sessions and tell us your feedback and to make this learning process this part six more conducive for all of you we are also joined by an expert in the studio let me introduce her to you we have with us miss ankita dureja ji namaskar ma'am namaste welcome to ncrt thank you ma'am is tgd chemistry from DAV Public School, Sector 49, Gurugram. And ma'am, as I already mentioned that at this particular session of science, class 10, carbon and its compounds, it's a continuation of the five sessions that have been done before by CIT and CRT. Yes. So just if we could start the session with a recap of what all we have studied in the previous sessions. Yes. Welcome, my dear students. We'll have a quick recap of session five. We discussed about functional groups, aldehydes, representation is CHO, Suffix was AL and we did several examples. Carboxylic acid COOH, which is suffix is oic acid. An example is methanoic acid, ethanoic acid and so on you form the series. Ketones, that is CO representation with two free valencies and ONE is the suffix used. And when you talk about the examples, it is propanone, butanone, etc. We also discussed about nomenclature of organic compounds and that is looking like with four parts. First was prefix, second was root word, third was primary suffix and fourth was secondary suffix. Then we did rules of IUPAC nomenclature and on that basis the task was given to you. Quickly check your answers. The first answer was 2,4-dimethylhexane, second one was 2-methylbut1e and third one was 2-chloropropanoic acid. Now we will start with the present session and we will do chemical properties of carbon compounds. So the first reaction which we are going to study is combustion. Now carbon in all its allotropic forms burn in oxygen to give carbon dioxide along with release of heat and light. Combustion you already do in the lower classes and you have to correlate whenever carbon is burning in presence of oxygen it is having CO2 as a product, heat and light is released. And whenever the products are of hydrocarbons, carbon and hydrogen, the products are CO2, H2O and heat and light is released. Same way, when alcohol is also burned in presence of oxygen, it releases CO2, H2O, heat and light. But students, there is one aspect in combustion. We have discussed about saturated hydrocarbons and unsaturated hydrocarbons in the previous sessions. Saturated hydrocarbons means there is presence of single bond in between the carbons. So now when I burn those hydrocarbons which have single bond in between, it is burning with clean blue flame. Now what is flame? Flame is a burning region and blue flame is the color of that flame when saturated hydrocarbon is burning. And it is an example of complete combustion. Complete combustion means it is completely burning, it is not leaving any residue. And one more thing, we also should be like saturated hydrocarbon. Why? Because saturated hydrocarbon is completing the task and we should also complete our task what is given to us. Yes? So now when we talk about examples of this uh, saturated hydrocarbon, it is gaseous fuels. Aapne LPG cylinders apne ghar mein dekhi honge, gas stoves dekha hoga. Yeah. Jab burn hota hai, what happens? The blue flame comes. Hmm. Because it is completely burning. Now I am leaving one question to the viewers. What is the composition of LPG gas? What is there in it? You have to scratch your mind and you have to search the answer. I will ask in the next session. Hmm. So now when I talk about these gaseous fuels, it is burning completely. It is giving the blue flame. Same way when I talk about alcohol burning, it gives blue flame because it is a case of complete combustion. 
but we have some unsaturated hydrocarbons also. Now, unsaturated hydrocarbons, when they burn, there is presence of double bond or triple bond in between the carbons. So, it is burning with yellow flame. The color of the flame becomes yellow and lot of black smoke is released. And the result is deposition of sooty flame if I put some yeah. metal plate over it. So, now it is a case of incomplete combustion. Now, you all have seen candle burning. Diwali pe hum log candle baut yeah. burn kerte hain. So, now I will show you a simple example of incomplete burning. Yeah. So, we have a candle over here and yeah. we have a mat stick and we are trying to light the candle. Yes. So, this is an example of? Incomplete combustion. Now, okay. you can easily see. Please focus. It is a yellow flame coming up. Yeah. So, it is a case of incomplete combustion and you have to notice the black sooty flame coming out. Now, it is not clearly visible, but that deposit of black sooty residue will be here on this kind of a plate. Now, it is like this. Now, I am going to put it. Okay, yeah, I could see it clearly and even uh, we can, yeah, now, we see? can show it to our viewers. So, this is a black sooty flame. So, this is a black carbon deposit which is actually not burnt completely. Hmm. So, this is a case of incomplete combustion. Yeah. There are various other examples also. There are various other examples also of incomplete combustion that is kerosene oil. You must have seen kerosene lamps. And one very important point here I need to discuss about camphor. Camphor, what is camphor? You must have studied in your lower classes. Camphor mm. is a sublime substance. Yeah. When it burns, it actually changes to gases mm. easily. Directly it changes to gases. Now, camphor also burns with yellow flame. And there is one very good science behind camphor burning. When I burn camphor, it is actually releasing some fumes. Hmm. And those fumes are coming in the air. Yeah. And that air is becoming pure. Why? Because it actually kills the bacteria, viruses hmm. around. And what is the main aspect in this era? We all are suffering from pandemic. Yeah. So it is advised that we should burn camphor at home. Hmm. So, the fumes which is coming in our home, it is actually making your environment clean. It is killing is the it bacteria. Is the same substance that we use to keep between our clothes in the Almira? That is naphthalene. That okay. is also a sublime substance, but yeah. we cannot relate naphthalene and camphor. That is naphthalene. Okay. Though naphthalene also burns with yellow flame. Yeah. But that is also a sublime substance. Mm -hmm. But the burning of camphor is actually resulting in killing the environment. Or sorry, okay. in killing the bacteria in the environment. environment. So, it is killing the viruses. So, mm -hmm. you should. But... My dear students, if you are practicing burning of camphor, please make sure you are doing in presence of your parents because yeah. it suddenly catches fire. Okay, so that was all about unsaturated hydrocarbons. And there is one more aspect. We just studied that when we talk about your cylinders, when you talk about your gas stoves, mm. it is completely burning and it gives blue flame. Yeah. But sometimes you must have noticed yellow flame. You can correlate with the picture I have shown. Yeah. Sometimes the yellow flames comes. Now, what is the reason behind it? The blocks of those stoves get mm. blocked. Means the blocks which are there, they are actually stuck with the some particles you can say and the air is not coming properly from those holes. Mm. So, if I, limit it, if I limited the supply of air, mm. what happens? This results in incomplete combustion of the gaseous substance also. That's why we see yellow air. Yes. The real hero is oxygen supply. Hmm. If I construct or if I, you can say, limit, limit the supply of oxygen, then the burning will not take properly. Hmm. Even if the compound was saturated, yeah. then also it will not burn properly. It will start giving yellow flame. So, that's why your utensils, you must have seen, your utensils get blackened from the bottom. Yeah. The only reason is this that the flame is becoming yellow. Hmm. So, you should get your service done for that particular stove. That should be kept in mind. Yes. So, our next type of reaction is oxidation. Carbon compounds can be easily oxidized on combustion. In addition to complete oxidation, the alcohols are completely converting into acids. Now, this is a case of controlled combustion where we are using oxidizing agents. Now, what are oxidizing agents? They are actually adding oxygen to this alcohol and it is oxidizing it. There are two very common oxidizing agents which we use that is alkaline KMnO4 that is a mixture of KMnO4 and your NaOH that is alkali. 
at the same time acidified potassium dichromate can also be used which is a mixture of K2Cr2O7 with your any acid that is H2SO4. So whenever I am burning my alcohol with these oxidizing agents it will result in acids that is COOH group and there is one very unique thing here when I talk about alcohol everybody please focus in this alcohol how many carbons are seen Simran ma'am how many carbons are there? Well, I think there are two of them if I'm not wrong. Yes, there are two carbons. So, if you see your acid, how many carbons in the product side? There are two again. I yes. Guess. So, this is the main point here. Whenever mm. you are burning alcohol in presence of oxidizing agent, the number of carbons on the reactant side as well as on the product side remains the same. Mm. So this is, you have to note this point, number of carbons will remain same and this oxidation will take place in presence of oxidizing agents. Yeah. And two oxidizing agents we have studied, any of the two we can use. And what is the role of oxidizing agents? Oxidizing agents actually oxidizes. Hmm. It oxidizes some other substance and itself it gets reduced. Okay. It is, this oxidizing agent is actually adding oxygen is in this alcohol. Yeah. If you can see there is only one single oxygen in the reactant yeah. side and it is two two in the product side. Hmm. So this oxidizing agent have actually added this one oxygen. Okay. So this is a oxidizing reaction or you can say it's an oxidation reaction. Hmm. Now next reaction which we'll talk about is substitution but we'll first discuss. Suppose hmm. uh, a class is going on and yeah. a teacher is on leave. Yeah. So obviously students will not sit idle. Hmm. Some other teacher comes and take their classes. So it's substitution classes, hmm. right? So what is the substitution? For that particular time, it's a replacement. Yeah. So this way, substitution reaction also, it's a replacement type of a reaction. Hmm. Now what happens? Saturated hydrocarbons are fairly unreactive and they are inert in presence of most reagents. But in presence of sunlight, chlorine is added to hydrocarbons which makes it a fast reaction and chlorine is actually replacing hydrogen mm. atoms one by one. So this replacing is actually one removal of one hydrogen will take place and Cl will keep on adding stepwise mm. and this is known as substitution reaction. We will carefully exam see the type of reaction. Now you can see I have taken methane CH4, mm. I have added Cl2 in it. So now what is happening in first part, in the first step Cl is adding it's forming CH3Cl and one Cl is reacting with H. Then 3H is there in the product. In the second step, one more H is being replaced by Cl and the product is CH2Cl2. Hmm. In the third step, again one H is being taken off and Cl takes the place. It becomes CHCl3. And then, and CHCl3 is chloroform. It's hmm. commonly known as chloroform. And again, when CHCl3 reacts with Cl2 and it forms CCl4. So if okay. you can see here, Hydrogens in each step is actually replaced by Cl hmm. and the reaction stops only when no hydrogen is left with this. Hmm. You can see in CCl4 there is no hydrogen. Yeah. So it's a continuous reaction and this type of a reaction when one hydrogen is being replaced and Cl is being added up and that is known as replacement or you can say it's a substitution reaction. Okay. Okay, now we'll focus on another type of reaction that is addition reactions. Now, mm. addition reactions takes place in unsaturated hydrocarbon. That means in between the two carbons, you have unsaturation, presence of double bond or presence of triple bond. And this reaction takes place in presence of a catalyst. Now, a question arises, what is catalyst? Yeah. Now, catalysts are those substances which are actually not taking part in a reaction directly. Mm. It is actually altering the speed of a reaction. Maybe mm. some reactions are slow. So we want those reactions to be fast. So we just add catalyst. So, so basically that it acts as a helper. You can say that. Mm. It will increase the speed of the reaction. Mm. So these addition reactions takes place in presence of catalyst and that catalyst can be nickel, yeah. can be palladium and then when they react it gives saturated hydrocarbon. You can see the reaction there is presence of double bond in between the two carbons. Mm. There are four R groups attached. R group is any alkyl group. You can correlate with the previous sessions. We have discussed about this group and then when nickel is being reacted as a catalyst, hydrogen is being added. Now when hydrogen is being added, the double bond converts into single bond. Now this reaction is famously known as hydrogenation of vegetable oils. Hmm. Now why I am saying it as hydrogenation? Hydrogenation means addition of hydrogen. Hmm. And why I am saying oils? Because generally oils have unsaturated hydrocarbons. Hmm. 
Now, we will study more about these vegetable oils. Vegetable oils have unsaturated bonds in between and they are liquid in nature. So, they are healthy in eating. If we eat something, we will like this oil which is healthy in eating. So, your unsaturated oils are healthy in eating because they have presence of double bond. Hmm. And when the hydrogenation is done, they convert into single bond, then that results in animal fats, solid in nature. So, this is the most common example of hydrogenation of oils and for cooking purposes, we try to choose an oil which is unsaturated in nature. Okay. Because only then it will be good for health, you can say that. So, these were your reactions of addition reactions, your so an example of unsaturated oil that we might use in our kitchens? The oils which we are using like vegetable oil with mm -hmm. a common example like you can say your uh, uh, refined oil is a liquid fat, it is an okay. unsaturated oil. Okay. Or you can say olive oil, it's a liquid fat, it's an unsaturated oil. So they are healthy to use? Olive okay. oil is very healthy. Hmm. So it's very healthy for you. So you un just shift to more of unsaturated fats. Though refined oil is not that good but olive oil is really good okay. to use for the cooking purposes. Okay, so these were the four reactions and I have framed one task for you students. You have to complete these following reactions. You have to focus here that there are three carbons in this alcohol and in the second there are four carbons and they are being treated by alkaline KMnO4 and acidified potassium dichromate and you have to complete how many carbons will be there, how many carbons will be there in the product side. So you have to focus on this task and once you complete we will come to our next topic that is ethanol okay and ethanol is one of the very important topic to discuss ethanol is the second member of alcohol family that is c2h5oh we have already studied about this in the previous sessions it is also known as ethyl alcohol hmm. when we talk about its common properties it's a colorless liquid it has a pleasant smell it has a burning taste and ethanol is liquid at a room temperature. Hmm. When we talk about its solubility, it is soluble in water. Hmm. Now, when we talk about ethanol, the burning of ethanol gives clean fuel. It is considered as a cleaner fuel. Why? Because we burn ethanol, it burns with a blue flame. Hmm. So, that's why we say ethanol burning is actually resulting in a cleaner fuel. And when we talk about the chemical properties of ethanol, you have to focus here. Ethanol when reacts with sodium, it forms sodium ethoxide and hydrogen. Now carefully imagine with this, it is C2H5OH, it is reacting with Na. Now Na is a strong electropositive element. It tries to eliminate this H from the reactant and it forms C2H5ONA. So, this is sodium ethoxide and it's a release of hydrogen gas. You can test your hydrogen gas. How can you test hydrogen gas? Whenever you are testing hydrogen gas, it is actually burning with pop sound. Hmm. So, the popping sound comes in hydrogen gas and you can test. But again, I am telling you my dear viewers, if you are conducting this experiment in the lab, you always conduct in presence of your teacher. Yeah because these need extra precautions. So, this was one reaction when ethanol reacts with sodium, the product is sodium ethoxide. Now, when I try to correlate the next step, the next reaction, it is when ethanol reacts with hot concentrated H2SO4, what does it form? Now, you have to focus what I am going to do on the paper. Yeah. So, this is my ethanol C2 H5. OH. I can simply write it as CH3, CH2, OH. Now, when I treat this with concentrated sulfuric acid, now concentrated sulfuric acid is a dehydrating agent. Dehydrating, dehydration. Dehydrate means what? What can you infer about dehydration? It takes away water, it takes very, away oxygen. Very good. Dehydration means water is being removed. Hmm. So, the basic task this uh, sulfuric acid do, it removes water. Yeah. Now, how it removes water, you have to focus. I can simply write this ethanol in this way. CH2, I can place one H here. Hmm. CH2, I can place OH here. Now, what this concentrated sulfuric acid is doing? It is removing this H and OH like this. So, now 
this hydrogen is removed from this place, OH is removed from this place, what it will result? It will result in two electrons will become unpaired like this. Is it clear? I will make a bigger dot so that it is visible. When it will be removed, it will create these two electrons hmm. and we have studied in our previous sessions, two electrons make one bond. Now see what is happening when this water is removed, now this CH2 was ha having this one bond and one electron is being created. Hmm. Same way this CH2, one electron is being created. So now what will happen? These two electrons will come and they will make bond like this. So it is a double bond. It is a yeah. double bond. So the product will be CH2 double bond CH2, CH2. it is C2 H4. H4 and what is the name? Two carbons, eth, hmm. double bond means primary suffix is en. Hmm. So this is ethene formation taking place Okay. and obviously water is removed, so H2O. Students can you understand this? Yeah. Dehydration, this is actually known as dehydration of alcohols where H and OH can be easily removed by this dehydrating agent and our product will be ethene. So this is your next reaction that is dehydration of ethanol and when I talk about uses of these ethanol, it is used for making alcoholic drinks, it is used as a solvent, it is used for medicines in tincture of iodine. Tincture mm. of iodine is actually a solution in alcohol, iodine is actually mixed with alcohol. So cough syrups, tonics etc, it is also used as an additive in petrol since it is a cleaner fuel. Yeah, we still have 5 minutes in this session, uh, we may continue the session from there. Yes, I will just focus on one more thing here, ethanol consumption, when large quantities of ethanol are consumed, it tends to slow metabolic processes and it depress the central nervous system. So ethanol consumption should be controlled, it should not be in adequate amount because it is actually harming your central nervous system. And unlike ethanol, methanol, I have to focus here Simran ma'am, yeah. methanol is CH3OH. This is my methanol, one carbon and this is my ethanol. Ethanol consumption is bad, obviously it is mm. posing threat to the central nervous system, but mm. methanol consumption is even more bad. Oh. Why? Methanol consumption is fatal on mm. the spot. What happens? When methanol is consumed in the body, it get oxidized Okay. and when it get oxidized, it forms methanol mm. and methanol my dear viewers is very harmful for the liver. It actually reacts with the cell. Hmm. and it coagulates the cell. What do you mean by coagulation? Coagulation means ikatta okay. The way we make egg, egg yeah. get coagulated. Same way this methanol, hmm. when it is there in the body, it coagulates the cell. Hmm. It actually destroys the protoplasm of the cell hmm. and it affects the optic nerve and it causes permanent blindness my dear viewers. So methanol consumption is really, really fatal. Why? Because this methanol is getting oxidized to form methanol hmm. and this methanol is very harmful for us. So this has to be controlled. At the same time, when I categorize alcohols, there are three forms of alcohol. Okay. One is absolute alcohol. Hmm. One is rectified spirit. Rectified spirit is a solution of 95% alcohol okay. and it is used in first aids and so on. And there is one more type of alcohol that is denatured. Okay. What do you mean by denature? Denature. Denature. Losing its nature? Yes. So alcohol, we usually tends to lose alcohol nature by adding some poisonous substances. Okay. Why? Why? Because so that it can be used commercially also. Hmm. Because otherwise everything if it is consumed, it, the concentration or the composition, so we are adding actually the poisonous substances in order to denature it. Okay. So these all we studied about ethanol. So we'll have a quick recap now. Yeah, we still have two minutes in the session. We can have that. So we have a quick recap. We started with types of reaction. Mm. We studied with combustion. That is a burning process, which is of two categories, complete burning, blue flame, incomplete burning, yellow flame. 
Then we did oxidation which is a controlled combustion. Oxidation is taking place in presence of oxidizing agents where oxygen is being added from reactant to product one oxygen is more. You have to focus on that and alcohol is having two carbons then acid form will also have two carbons this you have to make sure. Then third we did substitution where chlorine was being uh, added and hydrogen was being replaced. Hmm. Then we did addition reaction where double bonds are converted into single bonds and we also studied about ethanol, ethanol reactions we have studied with sodium and we also studied the reaction of ethanol with concentrated sulfuric acid where double bond presence were there, mm. the formation of ethene was there and water was released because concentrated sulfuric acid was a dehydrating agent. Then we yeah. did various uses of ethanol and we discussed about methanol and ethanol in detail that methanol consumption is fatal because of the formation of methane null. Yeah. Well, that was some useful information from your end. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the viewers who have joined in for this session. Now it's time to wrap this particular session of class 10th science. But stay connected with NCRT because the next chapter is our Urdu. We will read about the Nazm. What is the Nazm? 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 Namaskar.